Welcome to our review on using hormones to treat infertility. So the first thing we need to know is why we have this problem of infertility. So first thing we need to consider are the possible causes here. First one in the men could be blocked sperm ducts, which will obviously prevent the sperm from actually leaving the male. Second is not enough sperm are being produced in the testes so that even when they are actually releasing sperm, there's not large numbers, which means the chance of actual fertilization occurring is reduced. For the women, we could have a lack of mature eggs being produced in the ovaries, so therefore reducing the chance of them being fertilized, or we could have a failure of the ovaries to release an egg. And obviously if an egg isn't released, then there's nothing to be fertilized. So one thing that we can actually do to try to help the people who suffer with these conditions is to use hormones to treat some of them. And that's what we're talking about when we refer to fertility treatments. So one hormone that we've looked at which can be used as a fertility drug is FSH or follicle stimulating hormone. And the reason that this works is that if you remember the purpose of FSH in the body is to stimulate the eggs to mature in the ovaries. It also triggers the production of estrogen. So because of those two factors, what we're going to see is an increased chance of pregnancy because there will be an increased likelihood of one or more eggs being released. If hormone treatments alone won't work, then people can also opt to use a process called in vitro fertilization or IVF treatment. So in terms of IVF, the first step that has to happen is that we're going to use fertility drugs to ensure that lots of eggs mature at the same time so that they can be collected. Now, these fertility drugs are injections of the hormones FSH and LH. So because those hormones are being introduced to the body, that means that a large number of eggs will mature in the ovaries at the same time and therefore can be collected. Step two is where those eggs have been collected and we place them in a Petri dish in a special solution. And then to that Petri dish, we add a sample of semen. So this may be from obviously the father that's involved or if the problem there is also his sperm production, it could come from a sperm bank. Now, as a result of the semen and the eggs all being mixed in that dish together, then what we'll see is fertilization will occur. The sperm will join with the egg. And remember, fertilization is the process by which the nucleus of the egg joins with the nucleus of the sperm. Once that's occurred, then they check the eggs to make sure they've been fertilized and that the early embryos are developing properly. Then what they do is they select one or two of those tiny embryos from the Petri dish, and then they're going to insert them directly into the uterus of the mother. Once that's happened, in theory, the pregnancy should progress as normal, just as if it was a natural pregnancy. The whole purpose behind the checking is obviously you don't want to just assume that every egg has been fertilized by a sperm. Otherwise, we may well end up implanting the actual eggs which hadn't been fertilized and therefore they're never going to develop. Usually they would only use one embryo at this point, unless there are reasons such as age where they think using a second one might increase the chances. But obviously that does link into some issues of IVF. When we consider these issues of IVF, then first one, it's not a natural process. So that means that there may be certain groups of people who don't necessarily agree with it as an option. Secondly, parents can conceive who would otherwise not be able to have a baby, which obviously we can argue is a good thing because that means that everyone has the opportunity to have a child. However, there will also be some people who'd argue that this is going against the rule of God, etc. And therefore, the reason they can't have a baby is because God has decided, etc. It does give the opportunity for older parents to have children. So those people who focused on their career first can also still have children. But IVF quite often results in multiple births. So rather than just getting one baby, sometimes you get a nice little buy one, get one free offer. Which brings us nicely on to our next point, it's very expensive. So there is actually only limited NHS availability. And if you are a single sex couple, then there is no NHS availability. So you can be looking at paying somewhere between eight to 10,000 pounds just for the chance of having a child. 
Obviously, as we said a bit earlier on, then it does give the chance for younger women to focus on a career first and have a baby later, as many more people are doing these days. And even though you may have spent all these thousands of pounds and invested all of this time and effort into it, it's not always going to result in a pregnancy. It's not a guarantee. So hopefully at the end of this video, you can now give examples of reasons for infertility. You can explain how hormones can be used to treat infertility and discuss some of the issues surrounding fertility treatments, which means that should you get one of those questions that asks you to compare the benefits and negatives about fertility treatments, you can bring in arguments from both sides.